Hello and welcome to this a full workflow tutorial on VR and the Omni. In this tutorial, we are going to go through the Omni importer and what you do when you actually just come home from a shoot. So let's get right to it. So the first step is going to be to take the SD cards out of the Omni and put them into the USB readers that come with the Omni full kit. You are then going to put them into a USB hub and turn that on. Now you will wait for the six SD cards to be recognized and you are going to open the Omni importer. Now on the first page of the Omni importer, you're going to see that you can search on the SD cards or locate your footage. If you want to use that function, locate your footage, uh, you have to be very careful about something is that you will, if you copy just the SD cards for uh, later reviewing, you need to copy the DCIM folder in its entirety. You mustn't just copy the MP4s or just the content of this folder. You really have to grab the full DCIM folder and copy it into a folder that mimics the SD card structure. So you would have six different folders and in each of those folders, you would have a DCIM folder with then the footage. For this particular case, we are not going to do that. We are just going to go and grab it straight from the SD cards because we want to use the Omni importer to actually copy the footage. Now, ideally on a shot like this, you will have um, managed to have a production sheet or something that will allow you to know roughly what you are looking for and what type of footage do you have. Uh, this will make it way easier to review the footage and make sure that you have what you really need and what you really want. And this will also make naming each video way easier. Now, when I'm opening the Omni importer, there are a lot of different informations. Uh, you can see that here I have all my videos at the top here. I have the different type of shots uh, on those SD cards. I only have videos, so photos and multi shots um, is empty. And then we have the start folder uh, and we're going to go back to this in a little moment. Now for videos, uh, you have also information for each of the videos. So you have resolution uh, with the frame rate, the duration, the date, uh, size, and the type of blending that you are going to use. You can see here that with the 120 frames per second shots, the preview is not supported. And the reason for that is that the Hero 4 Black does not create a THM file for 120 frames per second uh, videos, so we cannot preview it straight from the SD cards. But you still can have an idea of what this is. Uh, you can then change the name, so organize your folders. Let's say here this is TH first kicker, because I do remember that this shot was shot on the first kicker. Uh, but if we go into a video, let's say, let's find a 1440 at 60 frames per second, you can see that we can preview the shot straight from the SD card. So if we go down here and we click on play, we can see what was shot and it's straight reading straight from the SD cards. And we now uh, know if uh, the shot is what we expect it to be, the shot is uh, good or bad. If there has been some major issues, you should be able to see them here. So you're going to go through all of your footage and the idea is that you can select then each of the shots you really like, your best ones, and then just store them. And you will do this with um, the videos. You can then do this for the photos and the night lapses or time lapses if you have some. And then you will go into your start folder and you will only find your preferred shots. And then for each of the shot or for multiple shots, when you select multiple shots by um, holding command and selecting them, or just by doing command A or control A to select everything, you are going to be able to apply some of the settings. For example, uh, on that shoot, I know that I will want to do a render for each of the videos. I will also want to do a color harmonization every five seconds because those are mostly uh, pretty static shots with pretty static lighting conditions. So I won't need to do a very quick color harmonization. 
Um, I'm not going to flip them. Flipping them would allow me to just turn the footage around. And the blending, I like having sharp blending to have a better sense of where the stitch line are. And so I'm just going to keep the sharp blending here. Um, I won't use stabilization on all of my shots, but uh, I know that here I have a shot that has some movement. So for this one, I am going to select stabilization. And you can now see that here I have the stabilization icon that appeared uh, when it's not around here. You can also uh, choose for the setting for, the, for each sequence. If we go back into our videos and find one that's in 1440, you can select an in and out point. So if we drag around the white uh, marker here, this is the playhead, but we can also drag around the black markers and this will set up an in and out point. Now, it is important to understand that the in and out point won't cut the original MP4 files. So when you are going to import, you are going to copy the files in their entirety. Uh, but the in and out point will define on what part of the video all the settings are applied. So if I'm choosing to do color harmonization, it's only going to be done between the in and out point. It's the same thing for the render. I'm only going to render the part that I selected. And then when I open IVP with the files that I've imported, I will find this in and out points again in the footage that I have in IVP. Now, another thing to note with the Omni importer is that if you open the preferences, you can set up your favorite preferences. You can set up the default settings for video settings, image, and multi shots. Uh, so you can also select to do a render for each of your photos, for example, and a render in JPEG or in TIFF at uh, maximum resolution or half resolution. Uh, you will also be able to uh, have a color harmonization uh, for photos. It's going to be um, for single photos. It's just going to be enabled or disabled uh, with multiple photos. You're going to be able to have every second, every five seconds or every 10 seconds. So you can have your favorite setup here. And now if we go back into our start shots here, I have the shots that I want to import right now. I'm just going to do command A and select everything or control A on a PC. And I will click on start processing and it's going to ask me where do you want me to put the footage. So let's say I'm going to put it on my desktop in the import Omni folder. And now it's going to start copying the files from the SD card to my computer. Then it's going to go through stitching the files and then it's going to start applying the different settings that I asked him to apply. Let's say here in that first case, the color correction every five seconds, and then it's going to do my 4K render. Now, I have to be completely honest. The 4K render that you're going to have here in most scenarios is not going to be absolutely perfect. You haven't spent much time working on it yet, so it still needs to be worked on. You still might need to work with the control points. You still might need to adjust the horizon a little bit. You never know what you might have to do exactly, but in most cases, it's not going to be perfect. But it's going to be good enough for you to start working on an edit. And the workflow we do recommend is that you do create those renders when you are importing because once you launch the import, you can just go and have a good night of sleep, have a rest or just have a beer with your friends and let the computer do this hard work for you and do this long post processing process for you while you are not sitting in front of it, just waiting for it to end. So the idea is that you create those renders and then you are going to go into Premiere without opening AVP. You are just going to go into Premiere using some plugins, maybe to adjust the horizon and sort of correct some of the small mistakes that can happen. Not trying to work on the stitching, not trying to work on creating a good 360 video, just having something that you can look at in a headset to create an experience, to create your full edit. Because you just want to go back into AVP and work on the footage that you are actually going to use. You don't want to go into AVP and work on every single footage uh, 
make everything perfect, then export everything and then start working and then realize that half of what you've worked on is actually not going to be used in your final video. This is a process of selection that you want to do really quickly, really as the first step of your full workflow, of your professional workflow, uh, and then go into AVP and actually correct only the 8, 10, 15 seconds that you know you are going to use in your final experience. So that's it for me with the Omni Importer. Um, we are not going to show you how to create an edit in uh, Adobe Premiere because that's another subject for another time. Um, but we are going to let this import and then we are going to go and dive into Autopano Video Pro and Autopano Giga and how do you actually stitch together these videos. So thanks and I'll see you then.